for the winter break assignment. And if you are listening to this recording, you are a good, very determined student who came back to my channel after seven days of this not being posted. I apologize to all my students for that since this was a few technical difficulties which prevented me from being able to post a video. So there's an audio and it's going up on December 27th. Since it's going up one week late, I am going to give anyone who follows these instructions exactly to the letter perfectly extra 10% uh, on the winter break points. That's right. If you follow these instructions, you will get an extra 10% credit on the uh, winter break project. Okay, so what are the most important points that you need to know? First of all, you need to know that the winter break assignment is due the day you folks get back. So the week you get back, that could be uh, January 3rd or January 5th, if you are first, second or third period, and um, January 4th or January 6th, if you are periods uh, 5, 6 or 7. That is the most important thing. Please make sure that you have your winter break assignment ready to collect on any one of those days. Okay, if you look at the second uh, page, the back page where it says the expectations in rubric, you'll know the basic most important points. Please make sure that you label the seven continents. Yes, seven continents on the physical map. That means you may have to either draw in Antarctica or have an arrow pointing to where Antarctica would be. You also need to label the four oceans, Arctic Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, and Indian Ocean and the five seas that we will study. The Caribbean Sea, the um, Mediterranean Sea, the North Sea, uh, the Arabian Sea, and the South China Sea. Um, you all need to label these same oceans and seas on the political map. Uh, for both the physical and political map, please, please use color pencils and plea or use crayons instead of markers. Please do not use markers to color in the continents and the countries. Please use color pencils or crayons because it'll be easier to label inside those countries instead of having to draw lots of arrows. Uh, it will also be easier for you to see the countries themselves since you won't have the problem of marker leaking through on both sides. If you've already done your map in marker and you want to get the extra credit points, please feel free to email me and I will send you a digital copy so that you can reprint it and color it in again. Okay, about the political map, please make sure that adjacent countries are different colors. That basically means if you are coloring in Brazil in South uh, America and you color it in yellow, please make sure that Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, uh, the Guianas, the Dutch Guiana or French Guiana that are touching Brazil are not the same color. So they all can't be yellow. If you color Brazil yellow, then Paraguay should be green, Uruguay should be purple, uh, Dutch Guiana should be brown, British Guiana should be orange, etc. Please make sure that countries that are right next to each other are not the same color. Please label the specific countries. Uh, there are 24 countries that you need to label. You can label countries like um, United States or Russia, since they're such big countries, you can write the label right there inside the country. If they are a smaller country like Vietnam, please put an arrow right as close as possible to Vietnam uh, and uh, write Vietnam so that you know which ones they are. Again, if you are drawing, uh, sorry, coloring in in color pencil or crayon, drawing those arrows or writing inside the countries will be much easier and clearer. So please use color pencils or crayons. Okay, um, those are the instructions for the political and physical map. Uh, please let me know if you have any further questions about those two maps. For the second part, and this is worth 30 points, the maps were each worth 10 points, so together they're worth 20 points. Um, you also need to know that the maps will have a map quiz the week you get back. There will be a map quiz the week you get back, so please make sure that you study those maps. For the second part, part two, the movie, 
you had four movies that you could choose from. Uh, War Horse, which came out on Christmas Day. Uh, Joyeux Noël, which is a foreign movie, so there's some uh, uh, subtitles. Lawrence of Arabia or Gallipoli. If you chose War Horse, you have three questions that you need to answer. Uh, if you chose any of the other movies, uh, you have four questions you need to answer. Um, to follow these directions to get the extra credit, you should, number one, write notes for the movie that you watch. I want the notes in order to know that you did your own work, not that you copied somebody else's notes and copied somebody else's answers. I want to see your own original notes, which basically means your notes, while they could look similar to someone else's and you can work with someone else, most likely your specific words, the exact words in the exact order that you use will be different. And that's what I'm going to collect to check to make sure that you have done your own work. So if someone asks you to copy your notes, please do not give it to them. Uh, if you have exact same words in the exact same order, um, you will most likely have to come in and talk to me about your winner project uh, personally because I will be questioning whether you have allowed someone else to copy your notes or if you copied someone else's. So please, you can do your notes in any way, shape, or form. You could do it in bullet points. You, do, you write the question above and then you put in bullet points that helped you answer the, the question that you saw in the movie. You could write it like a think aloud where you have the uh, question at the top. That's the question you're answering and anything you see throughout the movie um, that would help you answer it, you would write it on the left and then your thoughts about what you saw would be on the right. That would be a think aloud version. If you want to do Cornell notes where you write the question on the left and then you put your answers that you see in the movie on the right, that's fine too. If you want to do it in a web, any of these options are acceptable. Any way you want to answer them, that's fine. But I would like you to show me your work, not somebody else's work. Okay. Once you're done with the notes and you've watched the movie, please answer each question in Tayak paragraph form. And this was stated on the rubric. It says that it should be in Tayak paragraph form for each question. That means you should have four Tayak paragraphs if you watched Lawrence of Arabia, Gallipoli, or Joyo Noel, or three Tayak paragraphs if you watched War Horse. In order to get the extra credit by following these directions, you should have a perfect Tayak paragraph. What that means is a perfect Tayak paragraph has a T topic or thesis sentence that answers the question. Um, it has evidence, and that evidence is introduced, so you have the I and the E. Um, that means please tell me exactly where you saw it in the movie. What scene are we talking about? If you were able to watch it on DVD, what was the time stamp on the movie um, or the chapter you were in? Um, explain who is in the scene, what main characters were in that scene. That's introducing the evidence and then state what the evidence is. What was seen in that movie, that part of the movie, that particular scene uh, that proves your answer to the question. So you have the T, the introducing where it was in the movie, the I, um, the E, the evidence itself telling me what you saw in the movie. And then you have A, analysis, explaining to me how what you saw in that scene proves your answer to the question. And last but not least, you have a concluding statement. Now, you may have more than one scene in the movie, more than one piece of evidence to help you answer the question. In fact, if you have three specific scenes or specific things that you saw in the movie that answers the questions, that would get you the extra credit. So if you do it in Tayak paragraph and then you add in three evidence, I will give you extra, extra credit. I will give you uh, an extra... Um, point for each question you do that in. An extra credit point for each question that you give me three pieces of evidence and analysis uh, that answer your question. Okay, let's go over the questions quite quickly. The first question that you will need for all of these movies, explain the motivations of at least three main characters to take part in World War I. Why did Lawrence of Arabia decide that he wanted to be part of World War I? Why did Mel Gibson's character in Gallipoli decide he wanted to be part of World War I? 
why was the war horse um, uh, drafted into the army? Who drafted him into the army, etc.? What were their uh, reasons for going to war? Their personal reasons, not the, just the country's reasons, but the personal reason of each person. Um, and then they give me evidence that shows that this is the reason why that person went to war or why the, the owner of the horse, the little, the boy who took care of the horse went to war, etc. That's question one. Question two, observe the weapons and technology used during World War One. If you want the extra credit, ladies and gentlemen, on this question, you where you give me more than one piece of evidence, therefore you get one extra credit point for this question, you would give me evidence for both a weapon and a technology. They can be different. Uh, for example, technology could mean uh, use of radio or airplane or tanks, or it could be the lack of technology. The fact that in War Horse, they're using horses instead of tanks. Um, uh, in Gallipoli, they're using a, uh, a, a runner as the messenger to, to tell the men at the front whether they should go over the trench or not, uh, instead of a radio. Okay, um, please explain how the use of this uh, technology would affect the outcome of the war, how the use of horses instead of tanks would affect the outcome of the war, how the use of airplanes uh, would affect the outcome of the war, how the use of poison gas, whatever it is, whatever technology or whatever weapons you tell me about, how would this affect the outcome of the war? How effectively did commanding officers use this weapons and technology? Did they use it well and therefore save lives? Or did they use it badly and therefore lose a battle? Question three, again, for all of the movies that you were assigned, you have to answer question three, one, two, and three. Describe the lifestyle of the soldiers while they are at the front in battle. How did the soldiers live? How did they take care of their necessary equipment? Analyze the living conditions. How would this affect the non-combat lifespan of the soldiers? For example, if a soldier, because of the, the way they took care of their equipment or because of the way they fought, if they lost a limb, uh, a leg or an arm, uh, how would this affect their life after the war? Would that mean that they would be, have a harder time getting a job? Might they lose their fiancé because they no longer are a complete man, etc.? How did this do you think this will affect their life after the war? Okay. Um, now, th those three questions, again, all, th all four movies have to answer those three questions. For question four, it's Lawrence of Arabia and Gallipoli only. How are Europeans depicted versus their colonized people? So in the case of Gallipoli, how are the British... Um, shown in the movie what kind of characteristics do they have compared to the australians and be careful ladies and gentlemen in gallipoli the colonized people are also white so the europeans that colonized australia they were white colon uh white colonists in australia um in florence of arabia you would be comparing the europeans which could include the british who Lawrence fights for, or the French, etc., and the Arabs that uh, he fights alongside. Okay? Um, how did these colonized people contribute to the war effort? What did they do to help the war? For Joyeux Noël, that's question five. This is only Joyeux Noël. How do governments and commanding officers depict the enemy? So how do the officers, like lieutenants and colonels, um, describe their enemy uh, to the soldiers. How is this similar or different than the soldier's personal experience with the enemy? And you'll see in the movie how these soldiers uh, interact with each other, the enemy soldiers. How uh, does this personal uh, experience differ from the uh, commanding officer's uh, way of showing the enemy? Okay, so that would be about propaganda beforehand by the commanding officers in the countries and the actual personal experience. These paragraphs are due. I may collect them on the day you get back. So please make sure that you have three paragraphs for War Horse, four paragraphs for Joyo Noel, or Lawrence of Arabia, or Gallipoli. If you have any questions, please email me at n as in Nicole, that's my first name, n Pasqua, P-A-S-C-U-A, 
at animo.org. Have a happy new year and thank you again for coming to uh, visit my site and learning these instructions. You will get extra credit if you follow them to the letter. Good luck. Happy new year.